Gone, Rav Matyam, when you all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakadash, double honors to the other apostles, the great millstone, Shalom to the and Shalom to the Sunni Akim, Sunni Suf, and Sayyidi, Shalom. In this video, I want to go into the judgment that King Solomon made between the two hearts concerning uh, you know, who the mother was. Of the living baby. Um, so, I want to read a little bit on the Wikipedia to uh, basically summarize what is happening in, uh, in this scene. So, it says The Judgment of Solomon is a story from the Hebrew Bible in which Solomon ruled between two women, both claiming to be the mother of a child. Solomon revealed their true feelings and relationships to the child by suggesting the baby be cut in two. Each woman is to receive half. With this tragedy, he was able to discern the non-mother as the woman who entirely approved of this proposal, or the actual mother begged that the sword might be sheathed and the child committed to the care of her rival. So what King Solomon used, he used wisdom. You know, he used wisdom to 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 discern, you know, with a with, with, with a small trial, with a small test, you know, who was the actual mother, you know, of that child. And this is something that King Allah, like that King Solomon asked for, you know, um, as he became ruler over the nation of Israel. This is the, the, the prayer of King Solomon in first Kings, the third chapter in the sixth verse. And it says, and Solomon said, thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy. According as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. You know, King Solomon, like a King David, you know, was about to pass away. You know, as we can read in the in, 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 in the previous chapters. So someone that you know would uh, come after him to sit on the throne had to be established. You know, the brother of Solomon, Adonijah, he made himself to be king, but that was never the purpose of the Heavenly Father. There was also not the purpose, you know, uh, as King David has had established that, you know. So eventually King Solomon was being made king, you know, but he, he, he didn't really have no experience, nor the wisdom or understanding yet to, to govern our people, you know, to govern the Israelites. And in this day and age, those are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. But also those who are scared among the heathen nations that might look like the heathen nations, but his lineage does go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, according to their father Ishmael. So what he did in a prayer, he asked the Heavenly Father to receive, you know, the, the ability and the understanding and the wisdom you know, to govern our people. So this is uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 7. And now, O Lord Yahweh, my power, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. I am but a little child. I don't know how to go out or to come in. So he didn't really have the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you know, how to perform the task of being king. Verse 8, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. So our nation back then you know, was already very big. <clears throat> Verse 9, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, who was able to judge this uh, this that is so great a people? <clears throat> and that's the prayer that uh, King Solomon asked you know, that he put up to the Heavenly Father. Uh, verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord Yahweh that Solomon asked this thing. And the Most High said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself nor has asked the life of an enemy, but has asked for their self-understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to that word, lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And so the prayer that King Solomon put up was being answered. Most I told him, I'm going to give you the favor. Most even said, I'm going to give you all these other things as well, riches, long life, etc., etc. But the point for this lesson is, is that 
King Solomon received that uh, understanding heart to discern between good and evil, to 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 to, to, to have con to have correct judgment. So this is John chapter three and verse twenty seven. John answered and said, "A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven." So. Everything that we have been given in our life, what is knowledge, wisdom, understanding, job, clothing on our back, you know, all these things came from the Heavenly Father. So in the instance with King Solomon, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he received to discern with good judgment, it was given unto him by how Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Okay. So I want to jump down to uh, to the point of the whole lesson. The instance in, in which King Solomon uh, judged wisely concerning who was the mother uh, uh, of the child. So this is First Kings chapter 3 and verse 16. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king who stood before him. And the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together, and there was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. So two prostitutes came before King Solomon, and one woman explained that three days after that she delivered her child, the other prostitute delivered her child as well, but nobody was there in the house uh, other, than, on the, other than them two. Verse 19, and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. So what happened? One of the prostitutes, she basically um, laid on her child during the night. You know, um, overlay. It says to cover the service of something. To place over, over burden. Um, so what happened is that she started to lay on her child. You know, and, and, and that's how... how um, how the baby died, probably due to suffocation or uh, too much be force being being uh, pushed on the little body, you know. Verse twenty, and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me, or then handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. So what that prostitute did, that whose child died, she she basically. Uh, Switched, switched the baby. You know, she gave her dead baby to the to the other prostitute, and she took the the, the living baby, you know, from the from the other prostitute. You know? Verse twenty one. And when I when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. The children, they 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 had a similar age. They were only three days separated concerning birth. So they're just as big, you know, estimated they're, they're probably just as big. They look similar, you know, a lot of the babies look alike. You know, and then, then they come before King Solomon. You know, there are no witnesses, you know, concerning what happened. The one woman says that, you know, that her baby was stolen from her and that she received the dead baby instead. You know, so now the king... With judgment, with, with with wisdom, he has to to, to, to establish a switch in judgment. Verse 22. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake before the king. So they were both uh, claiming that the living, that the living baby was from them, and that the dead was from the other one. You see? Verse 23, then said the king, the one, the one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is dead. And the other saith, nay, but thy son is dead, and my son is living. And the king said, bring me a sword, and they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two, and give half to the one, and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose child the living was unto the king, for her bowels joined upon her son. And she said, Oh my Lord, give her the living child and in no wise slay it. 
But the other said, let it be neither mine or thine, but divide it. And the reason that the woman whose child it was said, give it to the other one, give it to the other woman, because she, 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 she bore the child for nine months within her womb. She has a certain relationship with the child. She has feelings and emotions towards the child. She don't want to see, you know, her child being being slain and being, being divided in two. She'd rather see the child live than it being put asunder, you know, being cut in two. And it says, but the other said that it'd be neither mine nor thine, but divided. But the other one really didn't care what would happen with the child, you know. And that's how King Solomon judged. The one had feelings towards the child because it was actually hers, but the other one had no feelings toward it, towards the baby because it wasn't wasn't really hers, you know. Verse 27, then the king answered and said, give, give her the living child and in no wise slay it, she is the mother thereof. See, he established who was the actual mother of the child. Verse 28, and all Israel heard the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king. For they saw that the wisdom of the Most High was in him to do judgment. You see? So King Solomon established a correct judgment as he asked, you know. So, uh, you know, Rata Za, you know, this short video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kokedash. Double honors to the Elder Apostles, the Great Millstone, Mr. Tunguru Well, and Shalom to the Sinister Akyam for his truthful sincerity. Shalom.